Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm Kathy Hazel Adams, and welcome to Nine Things You Can Do to Raise Your Vibration. Uh, Stephanie is going to be co-hosting today for us. Um, we are recording this class live to share to YouTube. Uh, and we also, though, have live attendees for the class. So uh, what Stephanie will do is uh, toward the end of the class, when we have question and answer, you'll type your questions into the chat box and Stephanie will read your questions out loud. If you are watching on YouTube and you're getting value out of this video, please like, subscribe, leave comments, share it with your friends. It helps so much with the algorithm. And please feel free to make a thank you donation. Um, I have included a donation link in the description below. And also stay to the end because uh, I have at least one, maybe two bonus things you can do to raise your vibration. So um, let's go ahead, first of all, just and talk about vibrations and frequencies. Sometimes there's a question, uh, is there a difference? Well, first of all, frequencies are vibration. Uh, so in that way, they're very much the same and, and they are the same. Um, there are both Hertzian and non-Hertzian frequencies. Hertzian frequencies would be the frequencies that we can measure in the physical, in nature. That would be the, the notes on the musical scale that you find on the piano or the frequencies of the um, radio stations on the dial, you know, on the dial of your radio. Those are Hertzian frequencies. Um, Non-Hertzian frequencies are the idea energies vibrating in the universal mind. Uh, they are the ideas vibrating within the mind of God, and they are energies. Um, it's very important for us to remember as we're talking today that um, source, what we call source, God, source is consciousness. There is one consciousness that creates and contains and holds everything, anything that ever could be, all that is in all universes, everything that exists or ever could exist or ever did exist is, is held within the universal consciousness. So when you, you can use the word source, source is that one consciousness that creates and contains everything. Um, and it is, you can you call it the universal mind or, or God or the God consciousness or the mind of God. Um, it's important to remember that we are each individualized expressions of source consciousness. We are consciousness. We are not our bodies. We are consciousness uh, creating and experiencing ourselves as bodies. And what we are is source consciousness, the divine source consciousness, um, creating and expressing and experiencing through our individualized, unique perspective and set of potentials. Each and every one of us is an expression of the divine source consciousness experiencing itself. Um, and so the thing is that uh, the ideas the frequencies held in source consciousness, they're not Hertzian. and they're not things you're going to find on the radio dial. The um, idea energy of abundance is not on your radio dial. Uh, the idea energy, uh, energy of, of boundary is not on your radio dial. And the thing is that uh, the non-Hertzian energies, frequencies held in the universal mind come literally in infinite infinite textures, thicknesses, and densities. They're not just the frequencies found in the, the physical, in the electromagnetic physical realm. Um, I have that from my teacher, Seth, and other very high level, credible teachers all say that those frequencies are non-Hertzian and they come in infinite thicknesses, densities, and textures. Um, the ideas that we hold, um, that each of us is is a is a individualized um, identifiable 
frequency on our own. Again, I'm not on the radio dial and I doubt that you are, um, but each of us is an individualized uh, frequency that um, is identifiable. And what's important is that we vibrate with ideas and beliefs. Uh, and these energies do affect us uh, in our electromagnetic field, in our mental and emotional reality that we experience. And that will show up in the Hertzian physical realm in terms of the health of our bodies and even the vibration that we give off. I mean, you know, if somebody is vibrating in fear and anxiety, um, you can feel that it affects other people in the room. It can even, um, well, it does, can and does if, if it have physical effects. Um, I, I heard a story. It's not just a story. It was from my best friend at the time that um, this gal walked into a room to, and she was so angry. She was so lividly angry, livid that the, a glass uh, desk that was in the room cracked. So, so our emotions uh, have electromagnetic reality that, that definitely vibrate in the physical and affect things in the physical. So, enough talk about the Hertzian and the non-Hertzian, but it's just important to know that it's there are infinite frequencies that are in the divine universal consciousness that we vibrate with and hold within our field of consciousness. Uh, when, we, when we vibrate with um, ideas and beliefs that um, uplift our frequency, we're, we're going to be vibrating with ideas and feelings and beliefs of love, unity, uh, compassion, harmony, cooperation, kindness, forgiveness, these expansive, joyful, harmonious, um, everything is right with me and, and the world. Um, it's just love and it, it's all inclusive. It's unifying. When we vibrate with ideas and beliefs, uh, that are um, angry, in separation, in um, adversarialness, um, uh, ideas and beliefs and feelings of being wrong, not good enough, of having to defend oneself, uh, being guilty. Uh, those kinds of very negative um, emotions that kind of make you literally feel this way instead of this way, those literally bring your vibration down, both in the level of your consciousness and in and in your body and what your body gives off uh, in, in the electromagnetic physical spectrum. So having said that, why, why do we want to raise our vibration? Well, probably what I just said kind of answers that, but we can go into a little bit more detail. Um, the reason we want to raise our vibration is twofold and beyond. When we raise our vibration, everything in our lives and experience changes for the better. Things flow more easily for us. We go into this higher expanded um, awareness and understanding. We see things differently and in a new way. We perceive new information. There's new ways to understand new information. We experience feelings of, of love and compassion um, for others. And it, it's so helpful in every area because um, you're in flow. We're in flow with the infinite abundance that is our source instead of struggling against it and within ourselves. Uh, we're not holding others as separate. We don't feel threatened. We feel safer. We feel more relaxed. We're calmer. Uh, we, um, our bodies uh, don't need to be inflamed with that anger and fear anymore. Uh, disease uh, either lessens quite a lot and symptoms uh, lessen quite a lot or, or disappear altogether. Um, you're just not in a fight with yourself and the world anymore because you're in love and unity. And again, that includes an expanded awareness and understanding. You understand more what someone's where someone's coming from and what they're trying to say. And you understand more that maybe if they're oh not being very nice, that it's not 
directly about you that they're they're coming from their perspective and it's not really about you it's about them and the struggle that they're in uh, it just improves career finances um your interactions with others the health in your body um on the on the collective level the benefits are huge because the species, the human consciousness and the galaxy is raising ascend, ascending in consciousness level. And the human species has much higher levels of ability to, to function in cooperation, working together, all everybody together on the same team where everybody wants the best for everybody and all boats are lifted and everybody is getting what they need. And um, and by the way, we have the awareness now, the expanded awareness to create a, a world in which everybody is getting what they need. There's enough. Uh, the things things like lack and, and struggle and um, pain and loss, we're not vibrating in those things anymore. We're vibrating in abundance, what I call the yes flow, things just flowing. Um, the whole species is is and is able to evolve up into that. And that's what's going on right now. And the thing is, when we as individuals agree and allow ourselves to raise up in vibration, not only does our life improve immeasurably for the, for the better, and we find out who are who we truly are and what our true authentic self is. And we find our joy and we find ourselves living here, feeling safe and safely and in, in enjoying and enthusiastic and excited for our day and um, confident that what we have to offer is of value to the world and to those around us. Not only that, but we're literally adding, when you think of that state as a vibrational state within the universal source consciousness, when we as individuals sort of plug into and vibrate with that state we literally expand and strengthen that state and make it more available to everybody else. We literally expand and add to the human collective consciousness and we make that state part of what it is. We become part of, you may have heard the tipping point, um, the the analogy or the story of if, if you have 100 primates that when uh, that don't use tools for instance doesn't have to be primates could be anything but when the 51st individual starts picking up tools and using them all of a sudden it's now accessible to the the collective consciousness of the entire species and they all start using tools even even populations that are nowhere physically nowhere near the original population that's called the tipping point where you literally are adding a trait to the collective consciousness. So when we raise our individual consciousness to that, what, what is, you know, you would call the fifth dimension, we actually add to the collective consciousness and help everybody raise to the fifth dimension as well. And literally, as so many guides say, we're literally here to start creating heaven on earth. That's why. We want to raise our vibration. Uh, so let's look at some of the ways we, some of the things we can actually do to raise and hold a higher vibration. The first import, most important thing is to intend and desire to raise our vibration, our level of consciousness. Um, just the very intention and decision to do that initiates the process makes you available to it that it's all about allowing agreeing making yourself available to to let your consciousness lift and let your understandings and feelings and ways of thinking literally morph and change um, into higher more expanded states you cannot make it happen you cannot uh, decide to do it and force it to happen uh, you can't control it and make it go on your ego mind schedule. You allow it. You allow it. You agree. You show up for it and you give yourself to it. The second thing you can do is 
literally just engage deliberately in enjoyable, satisfying activities. As my teacher Seth said, any any activity that, that is enjoyable and satisfying and that engages you and you're absorbed in that you just find enjoyable is, is you in your joyful um, source consciousness creative state. And so you are literally vibrating in your highest vibrational source consciousness state when you're just doing something because you want to and you're enjoying it. It doesn't matter if it's you're, you're baking cupcakes or you're, you're working on uh, quilting something or arranging flowers or um, it doesn't matter what the activity is. It's that you're at, you're at play in that you're not doing it to get something else done. You're not doing it because you have to. You're not, uh, you're not judging yourself. You're not worrying about anybody else judging you. You are just absorbed and engaged and enjoying and interested in what you're doing. That is that is being in your true self, your true source consciousness, your highest self. Do that as often as you can because it's literally helping to raise your consciousness and, and to keep it raised on a more consistent level. That's that's the other part of this. Um, and. And tagging on that, I, I don't know if I'll call it a, a separate thing, but maybe, but seek out what is joyful and fun, laughter, TV shows that make you laugh, uh, you know, watching animals play or whatever that just make your, that just make you laugh, that make you just feel good and lighthearted and, and happy in the moment. All that joy, that is source consciousness. That's our true self. That's, that is where we can be all the time we only have thought in this third dimension that everything is about struggle and what I call knife fights, knife fight mentality. Um, we only thought that that's not our true nature. Um, sp spending time in nature. Uh, nature is we, we are divine physical creatures. We're not separate from nature. We are part of nature. And the earth has its own um, vibration. I don't know if it's Hertzian or not. Maybe, doesn't matter. The, the earth, um, we are of the earth. We are physical creatures. And when we go into nature, it immediately, and you know this, it just immediately, you feel relaxed, calm. All the, the worries and the busy hamster mind stuff goes away and we just, it stabilizes us. It, it brings us back to center. Um, it, it makes us aware of and feel our divine creaturehood and our basic well-being and okayness just in our existence as physical creatures. So more time in nature, doesn't matter if it's the desert or a beautiful garden or woods or just um, the water, doesn't matter, nature, to, to center you. Um, this is a big one I'm about to talk about. Start at all times being aware of, not in a narcissistic, self-absorbed way, but ask yourself at all times, how does this make me feel? We need to become aware of our feelings. And, and, um, the, and the reason is this, if, if you are, or spend time with a, an individual or perhaps a group of people, be it a club or a church or a social media group, that you find yourself feeling um, angry and, um, and threatened and disempowered, maybe um, sort of attacked or not good enough or less than, you know, judged or in competition, or you feel like you, you, you find yourself feeling like you have to go out, bow up and, and get in a, sort of get in a fight and defend something and because you're threatened, angry, uh, you feel like you have to maybe argue or convince somebody of something. All those feelings are lower vibrational feelings and, and it's vibrating with lower vibrational ideas of what's true and who you are. And um, if you're spending time with an individual or individuals, whether they're family or friends, or groups, as I said, church groups, political groups, clubs, social media groups, 
that start that that you feel that way tv shows if there are tv shows you're watching or even music you're listening to that you find yourself feeling angry and adversarial and um like you're in a in a fight in some way or having to defend yourself or you feel hopeless and disempowered we need to start carefully curating what we expose ourselves to if we want to raise our vibration and live in a higher vibration in the fifth dimension and and exude and emanate that vibration as and i'm being literal here we can become a walking crystal that anchors the higher vibration in the physical so that the rest of the world can vibrate up to that we're literally anchoring it if we want to do that we need to start really questioning spending time with people or in situations that leave us feeling angry and threatened and like we're in a fight and have to win and duke it out and um, defend whatever convince all of those things um, tv shows music um social media groups conversely spend time in situations and with groups and with people that you feel good when you're around them or watching tv shows or listening to music that makes you feel good how does this make me feel oh i if you feel more joyful more just uplifted and expanded it, it feels like this instead of this um it, it, that makes you feel um more hopeful and empowered um more that like things can really be okay in your world and and yeah you just feel good maybe just happier in their presence that's where you want to be spending your time that's that's pardon me that's who you want to be spending your time with curate make choices about what you let into your personal space what you take into your head and what you expose yourself to if you wouldn't expose yourself to um, radiation or toxic fumes why expose yourself to toxic vibrations and belief systems so the next thing i want to mention um is grounding and this is more for the physical body it, but it, it's all one it's all one there, there's no separation here grounding you've heard of grounding um, the earth actually carries a neutral electric charge. Um, and it has the ability to receive and drain negative energy, negative, I'm not a physicist or an electrician, or, but negative ions, negative energy, uh, electrons. Um, and it has actually the, the ability to emanate and share positive energy, um, positrons or whatever. When we ground to the earth, we literally can let the earth drain us, drain our energetic field and our bodies of those negative ions, those negative energies. I, I think of them as energetic free radicals bouncing around um, the, our energetic field and in our bodies making trouble. Uh, and they're always fear-based um, feelings and emotions. Um, that that are bouncing around and our reaction our reactions to fearful beliefs um, and it's and there's going to be you know emotions like um, being overwhelmed and confused and anxiety and guilt um, and you know just feeling all out of sorts and and upset and and not safe uh, those bounce around our electromagnetic and our body energetic field and in our bodies and the you can just you of course as you've heard stand in bare feet on the ground and let the earth literally drain those energetic free radicals out of your field and out of your body. It, and it's like an interference pattern. It just it just makes just a mess in your in your field. Let the earth drain it. Um, and the earth energy will also stabilize and bring into um, a, a stability, a balance of the positive energy in your electromagnetic field. Um, you don't have to uh, do that just with bare feet on the ground. You can certainly use water. Water is an earth element. Um, you uh, you can 
whether you're swimming in a pond or the ocean or a lake or a river, or actually even in your bathtub, you can let yourself ground to water and let the um, un unchanneled, unstructured, destructive, uh, emotional energy bouncing around your field drain into that. Um, I'm not convinced you can't also do it with it, barring being able to do that, that you wouldn't be able to ground to metal, a uh, piece of metal um, in, in, in your house and in buildings. Electricity of free uh, unstructured um, energy is grounded to metal. So, and metal is an earth element, of course. So you could probably ground barring all else to just by touching metal. And, and importantly, intention. Remember that we're non-physical beings first. We are consciousness first, an idea. So having the intention to always letting yourself be in the state of grounding and grounded, always, just always let the earth be draining your field of this uh, um, rampant uh, negative energy and emotion or confused fear-based emotion that's flying around your field. Always be in a state of letting the earth drain that and stabilize and center you. Another thing you can do, this is probably number six or seven, um, seven, I guess, do service for others. Anytime you, you do something that benefits somebody else, immediately any idea of being adversarial or against in conflict with is, is immediately and by definition gone. You're, you're for that person. You're doing something for their benefit, no matter how little, you know, whether you're, you're just doing a kindness, helping someone get into their car at the grocery store or, or, you know, carrying their bags or whatever, or, um, or you go do, um, you know, community service at, 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 a, at a community center, um, do service for other people because that is putting you in a state of oneness, unity, with the other it takes you out of that i'm separate it's it's me against you it's us against them it's me against you know somebody else no it isn't we're working together on the same team it's cooperation for everybody's well-being so um yeah that's that's a wonderful way um the eighth thing i would bring up um would be focus on focus on what I would call things that make your heart smile. And what I mean by that is the things that make you absolutely just feel love, joy, awe, wonder, expansion, expansion um, it, beauty. Um, some examples would be uh, if you've had a child, um, how you felt, or I don't you know if you still have a small child or not, how you felt or how you feel about your your baby, your child, when you look at that child, or when you you know when you look at your baby, um, there's no I love this baby if or it's not perfect, it's perfect and it, you're amazing. I love you. I support you. I'm for you. Oh my golly, you are a miracle. I, I see you. You're just glorious. Oh, oh, just a wonder to behold. That is God love. That is how source consciousness feels about us. That's how we should feel about ourselves because we are source consciousness and we're learning to become aware that we are the God consciousness. That's what we're learning. That's what we're here becoming aware of. Our true self, our true identity. Um, so focus on that feeling and, and remembering that feeling. You, you may have or have had the joy of having that feeling for a certain pet where they just, just seeing that pet walk into the room with the whatever, the little curl of their tail or their ear, just your heart just goes, oh, and there's just nothing but love and just just being amazed at their just perfection and wonderfulness and just they just make your heart smile um you can have the heart smile just seeing something beautiful just a beautiful landscape or um or, or a beautiful garden or flower something that just anything that makes you go oh just the expansion and the beauty and the and the just wonderfulness and the joy that is 
our true self. That is the state of God consciousness that we are expressions of. That's where we can go and be all the time to where everything becomes amazingly wonderful. I mean, everything, just being here. Um, oh, look, there's leaves. Look at those trees with leaves on them. Oh my goodness, everything's so wonderful. It is really possible to be there in that kind of joy all the time. Another thing, um, number, I guess number nine would be remind yourself that you are the chooser of what you vibrate with, right? Um, you are in the power seat. If certain ideas and beliefs bring you into that lower uh, state of that feeling, that lower vibration of feeling, uh, and, and of course you're, you're playing all of those things out sometimes in your body, your ideas about yourself, you have the ability to make the choice as the holder of the ideas. You are not the ideas, the energies. You are the holder of them. And you get to choose whether to vibrate with them or not. Um, I The way I've been putting it lately is, well, again, curate what you're going to include in your composite of vibrational ideas that you subscribe to because it is you're subscribing to ideas and what you say is true and what you believe is true is you're, you're making a decree it's what you're going to experience in yourself and in the world if it is your stipulation and decree that the world is going to heck in a handbasket and people are terrible and there's nowhere to go but we're just going down we're just going straight down that's going to be the, what you experience because that's what you're vibrating with. We always get what we vibrate with. And we're going to have physical symptoms and whatnot um, from all the anger and being mad at ourselves and mad at other people and the inflammation and the, the playing out of those feelings about those beliefs in our bodies. So just remember, you are in the power seat. Um, and importantly, choice out in your everyday life. As you're raising your vibration and you're out there and you run into somebody, this happened to me just last week, um, you, you, I, I went into a, a store and the, the lady at the store uh, started uh, telling my husband and I about a very, very traumatic, upsetting experience she was having with the community. Um, and she, you know, the, 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 and she was a nice lady, but the, the, the trauma and drama and strugglesomeness of that situation. And you, in those situations, there's that, it's not even, a, it's smaller than a nanosecond. You have a choice of to stay in the expansion and the joy and the awareness with observing that this person is experiencing this. We're not diminishing that. And we have compassion that they are experiencing this. And we may even, because of our expanded understanding, kind of pick up on see kind of why and what their belief system is of why they're experiencing this without judgment. They're experiencing what they need to experience for their own reasons. No judgment there. But the point is, we have that choice in that moment to sort of dive into the bar fight with them and go into the fray or stay in the love, expanded, compassion, sort of what uh, uh, astrologer Pam Gregory calls the eagle's, the eagle's perch. Staying out of the fray with compassion and awareness of what's going on, but not having to dive into it with them. Um, you're going to, as you raise vibration and you're in this, you're going to run into those situations and you will, you'll know what I'm talking about when it happens. It's smaller than a nanosecond, but the choice, you make that choice of staying in the higher vibration. Um, what I'd like to do right now is uh, I want to make sure, please stay till the end because I have one or two other things to share, but I do want to have a little time for some question and answers. So for maybe five, seven minutes here, uh, 10 minutes at the most, let's take some questions. Um, if you have questions, type them into the chat box. Stephanie will read them and I will uh, give you the best answer that I uh, I can access. Hey, Kathy. Yes. I do have a question. For people who are beginning out, 
yeah on doing this uh-huh can you kind of talk about time? I know a lot of people, when they first start out, they're wondering how much time it takes to ground and to do those, you know, to ground or to make a choice. I know you talked about it being just like a nanosecond of always having a choice, but like to ground, how long does it take to ground? Oh, well, um, when when I actually, when I ground, uh, when I actually, and I do, because um, I, I love nature, I, we all do. And, and I've been a mystic my whole life. And from the time I, I've always just, I only want to be out in nature. Um, I stand on the ground. Um, I probably do it. I mean, as little as five minutes or so would, would probably be fine. I usually try to get 10 or 15 minutes, just, you know, just really get getting in the vibe and letting the earth, but I don't know if I can give you an exact amount of time for that. Um, the choice thing, what I was getting at is, first of all, you will have conscious, you, you, you will have uh, opportunity after opportunity to make that conscious choice. Uh, what I have found is when you get to where you're in, in that state so much more consistently that, as I explained to actually one of the attendees here, I was in this situation, I didn't even have a thought. It wasn't a conscious choice at all. I felt a nanosecond of a charge. It, it was the opportunity I would have had to dive in and get pulled down into the lower vibration, but it didn't happen. It was this nanosecond of a, a charged feeling in the atmosphere. That's the only way I can explain it. Um, so yeah, so just, but when you're in those situations, just choose as often as you can and don't beat your don't beat yourself up if you get pulled into it you're human we're all human and this does this does take it's not that it has to take time but it can because we usually have a lot of um sort of pro programming and, and beliefs um and and stories that we're still believing that are true part of this raising a consciousness is you start letting go of stories and histories and you start realizing the only thing that is true is me my consciousness right here in this moment and i'm creating past and future from right here and i am no longer bound by the physical law and seth says that and everybody says i'm no longer bound by physical law and i'm no longer bound by the st stories that i thought were my definitions and stories of the past no longer. It's almost like you, you've you satisfied a contract you had for your own stories. You know, you've heard the term contract and agreement. You you, you satisfy and um, um, abolish the contract you signed up for with that history. You still have all the knowledge you gained from it and the benefit, but you're not living from it like that's what's true for you now going forward. It, everything changes when you raise your, when you raise in more into the fifth dimension. And, and by the way, um, so Stephanie, is there another question? Because there's a cup. There are on that note. There are a couple of things I would actually say. But there we go. I've got it now. Um, so it can be difficult to stay out of the fray and still stay in touch with what is happening in the world. Oh, good. Oh, gosh. Yes. Good question. Um, you can observe and know what's going on in the world so that you know what the energies are at work and what the belief systems are. And you see, you can start seeing where people or groups of people, um, the ideas and energies they're vibrating with, that they're, they're playing out and exploring and experiencing in their physical uh, lives for their own reasons. And you can have compassion for that. The line has to be though it there where you get start getting sucked in like and, and and when I say compassion and you can have compassion for the pain that they're feeling that they're feeling pain but when you get sucked in and go all oh, those poor people they're victims of this and this and this is happening to them it's like well I can know that they sure think it's happening to them they don't realize they are um for their own reasons on some level participating, they're participants, but they sure think it's happening to them. And, and I have compassion for that and their pain, but I don't have to go in with them and think, 
that they're um, victims of things happening to them and have to get in the fight on their behalf with them and fight this or that in the world. Does that make sense? You don't have to, you can see that there, you can see that there's a bandwagon and you can see what the bandwagon is all about. You don't have to jump onto the bandwagon and join the group. Maybe that's the way I'll put that. Does anybody else have, uh, oh, okay, thank you. Anybody else have a question? If not, I have a couple more things I'll share with you. There are a set of attunements that are available. Um, they were given by the guides, capital T, capital G, the guides of Paul Selig, who is a, a very excellent, um, oh, oh, me, he calls himself me, a medium for the living. He's he's a, He does psychic readings um, and he works mostly with people as far as their relationship with other people. He doesn't do medical empath or predicting futures or anything like that. Um, he's He's... He, he lets people know where they are in relation to themselves and other people. And he has guides that speak through him and have done so now for probably, I don't know, 20 or I don't know, 30 years, but quite a long time. And they've written 11 or so books, dictated 11 or so books through him. And they are all about um, raising your vibration and helping to raise the vibration of the human species and the world. And they, they gave and give a set of attunements, which are a, a, a series of sentences, only about eight or 10 sentences or not that long, that are actually encoded with the intention to activate the higher consciousness state. What I'll call, they call the upper room, what I call the, uh, many of us call the, the fifth dimension, the higher consciousness. And they say that the higher consciousness is actually uh, it's it's an octave that when you're in the lower part of that higher consciousness, you will feel the love, the unity, the compassion, the expanded understanding and awareness. When you're in the highest part of that octave of the higher vibration, you are in Christed consciousness. You understand exactly who and what you are walking around the planet. Um, and of course, there's the whole gray scale in between. And so these are two, the set of sentences they build one upon another. Uh, they activate your uh, your ability to go right into the higher consciousness. Um, very importantly, um, you have to intend and accept. You have to agree to them. It's an intention, and you allow them the attunements to help you ascend in consciousness. Um, they um, they. They'll never take you to a higher vibrational level than you can handle. So you'll never, you'll never have to worry about burning your circuits out or anything like that. You will always ascend to the highest vibrational level you can handle. And they reveal themselves to you. They, as you use them and as you say them, they'll take you higher and higher into greater and greater understanding and awareness. Um, I love those attunements. Um, I use them. I, and I use them every morning, uh, pretty much every morning, um, as sort of, um, lack of a better word here, meditational ladder. But in any case, these attunements, um, I'm not going to go through them with you today. I do every couple of months or so, two or three or four months or so, I offer and teach a live attunement class and session in which we go through them. I talk about them. I talk about what the guides say. I give you my insights on the attunements. Um, I don't have an attunement scheduled right now coming up live, but I have posted a couple of attunement sessions that I did record onto YouTube. I will leave links for those um, in the description below. Um, the last thing that I forgot to mention is meditation. Make time. Whether it's 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, two hours, me, two hours. To, to go inward quietly when you're not uh, dealing with the struggles of the world, where you're not in survival mode, where you can focus your attention inward. You do not have to breathe a certain way or sit in the lotus position and try to keep your mind clear for two hours. Uh, that you don't, that's, 
You don't have to do that. You just drop your attention out of the busy thoughts and the worries about your day and what's coming in your day. Drop your attention more in front of your chest, in front of your solar plexus heart area. Uh, this gets you focused in the heart, which is the higher dimension consciousness. And and just be in that space of expansiveness and give yourself to it. It gives you energetic breathe space. Uh, I do have a 10 minute video that I did post to YouTube already. It's It's been there for a while of, of a med guided meditation that I use with my own classes and students to help them get out of their head and into, uh, into their field of their heart. So um, I will include that link here in the description below. Um, if you are interested in any of my other of my classes, go to my website, www.kathyhazeladams.com. Um, click on the classes webinars tab and you'll see uh, a list of my upcoming and my previously recorded meditations, clearings, webinars, uh, classes of different sorts that, that I've given. Um, also, I am available for private transformational sessions, readings. Uh, if you would like to book a private transformational reading, again, just go to my website and click on scheduling sessions tab. You'll see all the instructions for how to do that. I hope you found something that was helpful today. And um, I thank you all so much for being here today with me. Love to all. Have a most magical day.